you are looking at the notes, the show notes of the first Granny in the Kitchen podcast. It's Grandma Cat, and I'm a low-tech grandma, and boomlet. What's a boomlet? Well, it's a little boom, because there's this ongoing debate as to whether or not those born in 1963 should be categorized as boomers or whether or not they are outliers and are what is now called Jenner Jones, Generation Jones. And what you could say were the predecessors of Gen X. And have we got stories for you. Seatbelts, what, what were seatbelts? Bouncing around in the car. Uh, we rode our bikes everywhere unattended and our parents didn't care what we did in sports. If I got a blue ribbon, it was because I won first place. I didn't get a trophy for showing up. So here I am. I'm going to talk to you about uh, things that I find generally interesting to individuals working on their being, especially those who have uh, been subjected to abuse. Now, we've been through a lot of things as humans on the planet. So all of us have had trauma and abuse in some way, shape or form. And let's not make this into a who's been abused more uh, contest. That's ridiculous. I wish all people a beautiful life. And yet somehow struggles take put pressure on people, crush some, and turn others into diamonds. So to all you diamonds in the rough who really want to get your SHIT together, and that's a colloquialism for shit, which means the shit that you have to deal with both in your head and in the world. And as a person who's lived long and loved much, you have a lot to learn from me, Gen Z. Ask a question. Ask a question from a boomlet. Go ahead, put them in the notes below. I'll answer them. One of the funny things that we're told though that is ridiculous is that we are boomers when we were six when Woodstock was happening and free love and all of that. And we couldn't get jobs very easily in a depressed economy in their 80s, whereas now Gen Z turns them down. So, Everybody is different. All circumstances and situations are different. And if you had a pathologically narcissistic mother, the last thing you wanted to do was be homeschooled. The least amount of time you could spend with that person, the better. And the only reason why I had a sense of being and a sense of self and a sense of dignity was because I won first place ribbons at school for being smart, for being an artist, for being a, a runner that was fast. All right. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. And I'm not advocating vaping or actual smoking either. That's an expression. So pull up a cup of kappa. I'm drinking water. And welcome to podcast one. I will someday have a mic, but right now I don't. I'll start off with my voice. And then the next tech I'll do will be one of those headsets. But right now I'm just checking it out. And what we're going to do is talk about the uh, skill sets you learn after having been in a household where the parent just did not know how to raise you. They raised you incorrectly. You almost felt like you were the mistaken zygote, as Clarissa Epicola Estes says in her book, Women Who Run With Wolves. And you wonder how you ended up in this family because they're nothing like you. So that happens to a lot of us people. And then we go, were we tricked into being here? Why does my life suck? Why is it so difficult? Well, um, it's being difficult being made on purpose by the controllers. But also we have parents that never really grew up themselves. So it's up to us to reparent ourselves, take responsibility for the home that you were born into, the race, the belief systems that were there. All families are cults. All families are cults. All of them. 
and there's a cult leader. And in my family, it was a dysfunctional, pathologically narcissistic mother who dictated our lives and actually made them harder and gave them only one person in the narcissistic family structure, the golden child, had advocacy. They were the only ones whose life was advocated for. They're the only one whose talents were guided appropriately. My brothers were misguided. My sister, second born, was chided. The golden child was guided. And I was snided. So those are all just verbs, whether they are or not. I'm using them in that context to show that my brother was misguided not to do what his talents were. I won't go into details. My second born, my sister, who got the worst amount of lip service and yelling at in verbal diatribe and verbal abuse is when a person is using harsh and insulting language. We were raised by a mother who would give us harsh and insulting language, but not coming out of the womb, ready to learn how to sew on a Singer sewing machine with expertise. So that's what I saw, no pun intended. I use that word so a lot. It's sort of my um for a lot of people. I use so. And so also helps me when I do do edits from these videos. And I decided, you know what? It's about time I learned how to control my voice, perhaps speak more slowly, bring a thought through to my listening audience who doesn't have to look at me gesturing and what state of my hair or disarray or mourning face or lack of makeup I will be in. They can listen to the voice. So concentrate on my voice. And you don't have to pay attention to the woman in the black lace shirt. With a little bit of flirtatious fl flesh uh, shining through, coming through the, the, uh, the black lace. And with earrings on and black frames, my hair is up because it's, it's hair washing day. And in fact, I like to be able to enjoy my showers and take my time with them and turn them into a cleansing ritual so I'm going to do this podcast first and then do that. So that was my long uh, introduction, um, letting you know I am a boomlet, which is a little boom, <laughs> also known as the outlier of Generation uh, X and their predecessors. And we were given in our own name, Jen Jones. There's much discussion in my video. I will link in the description box below that you can get straight to and add your two cents worth. And I only remove uh, opposing viewpoints when they are insulting because they take the vibe out of the room. And I get to edit because I'm advocating for myself. Just because you have an opinion doesn't mean you get to exercise it on my channel. I can remove your comment. And that is practicing self-advocacy. And you know what that is? Something you don't learn when you're in an abusive relationship with your mother or with a narcissistic partner. Because you actually take and adapt yourself to their decisions about your life. Rather than you being able to act or even speak in favor of yourself, you will be belittled and berated and punished if you advocate for yourself. So learning self-advocacy is one of those other things that you learn how to do after you've been in that relationship that is so important for you to get this because you are changed forever, but you're not damaged forever as a child of toxic parents. They were too young, they were too broken themselves, and it's not personal to you. It's not a personal affront to you, although it is an indicator of how much your mother, narcissistic mother, will compete with you if you are looked at as a threat, and I was looked at as a threat, a threat to her sense of self, and boy, does she try to break me. And try she did, and she did succeed at one time. I was voted off the island. 
I was punished and made the scapegoat when my brother-in-law, the sewing machine sister, the second born, the one that was chagrined constantly, snot, like treated badly, verbally died, blah, 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 by my mom. She got really messed up in the head. I think she's irreparable. But I love that young girl and she was just always beaten down. And I had more charms, looks, and abilities being uh, the youngest of four, I had to keep up. And so amongst my own classmates, I excelled physically. I, I was voted most athletic. I was on the little league team. I was the pinch runner, pinch hitter, and I played first base. I saw a lot of action and I played with my brother's baseball glove. And why didn't I do softball? I'll tell you why I didn't do softball because I didn't have a softball glove. My older sister played softball because she got a softball glove for her birthday in July. I got a plastic toboggan and a bunch of SHIT on sale after Christmas. Stuff I didn't want. I did not like receiving presents from the narcissist. They always make you want to like, feel grateful for getting something you didn't ask for or didn't have a use for. This is after asking what it is that you wanted and not getting it. So you see, learning how to ask for what I want of the universe is new for me. I'm learning. I'm learning all of this. And you, anybody out there in internet land, I know there's a whole bunch of us. Uh, I have experience in conversation and in reading comments from under videos. There's a tremendous amount of us healing from this this generational of trauma. And so rather than becoming stuck there and recognizing it, remember everyone, that's my Mount Everest. When you get to the top of Mount Everest, that's when you go, oh my God, that's why I was going through all of this SHIT. And that's a polite way of saying shit. That's why you're going through all of the shit. Yes, because you were born into a family of narcissistic abuse or your parent, um, was toxic and had the inability to take care of you because they were half in the bag, which is a term to use for colloquialism, which means you drank alcohol out of a bag in which there was a bottle in there. <laughs> that means half of it's gone. You're half in the bag, okay? Mm. And when you get really, really drunk, it's called three sheets to the wind. I don't know where these terms come from. I just know they exist. Okay. So let's get on with this. So self-advocacy is the act of speaking or writing in favor of something. And why should it not be of your own rights? Uh, as far as when you are with a relationship with a person. And that you have a voice too. And that's what happens with these narcissistic types. They don't give you a voice. And that brings me to the, the current crazy and the silence of the lambs, a.k.a. sheeple, that's happening in an abusive way because of online silencing of our own ability to advocate for ourselves and our understanding and re and of reality in which every battery has a plus and a minus. And that's how the charge happens. And that's how we also have an electricity. There's a male receptacle and a female one in electricity. And there and then lies the issue is that pointing out the obvious has become somewhat, it has become censored by these crazy people who also want to say, okay, boomer, like, a person who is wise to the ways of manipulation on the planet doesn't see what's happening. And they're being played. The people who are have their panties tied up in a knot and they're angry, you know, they're going to age so fast. That is a toxic mentality. You're very toxic. Older people are wise. And... Becoming aware of abuse was one of the things I lacked 
It's now I have abuse awareness. Um, I don't have gaydar, but when I finally recognize somebody as a homosexual or a lesbian, I respect them, but they're not going to get special treatment. And when my city has Pride Month, I avoid all the restaurants because I do not want to be discriminated against. And I have been because being a uh, granny, white Caucasian woman in the United States of America is somehow in some people's books a reason for contempt towards her, which shows me that that is a person's weakness in judgment. So even before we had Wikipedia, we had the discussion of my generation, uh, that we were the me generation. We weren't in real time. We were not part of the boomers, but then the controllers got lazy and they put it online. And then all the tech children who grew up before there were such things as awareness. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see, uh, critical thinking, anybody? Uh, the ability to research and find primary source material. Now, my primary source material is my brain and my experience. And when I was growing up in the 70s, I was growing up, I was still a teeny bopper. I didn't graduate high school until 81. And then the, the, the Gen X, who I hear speaking, Owen Benjamin, the comedian, he could be my little brother. I could have been his teacher of life. He could have come to the sage, the crone, the granny in the kitchen for information. He thinks and speaks like I think, only he's more versed because he's a comedian. And he helped me understand he had at least one advocate, his mother, and I had no advocacy at all. I had, didn't have my mother or my father, neither one. And so because of that, you grow up with this other thing, inner fortitude. And yes, I know I'm bouncing all over the place. Would anybody like to call in with a question? <laughs> I'll pause there just in case. I'm kidding. This is not a live show, but maybe I'll get up my nerve and do that. Once I figure out some tech tips but this is what we've been talking about and I do I call the silence of the lambs the silence of the sheeple and I see what's happening because I was uh, raised in a toxic family and that's the gift of it every cloud has a silver lining and for me the silver lining was learning that there are certain tactics that people are subjected to by controlling types and manipulative types and they get them to do something, them thinking it's of their own free will. So that's the only way the argument of there is no free will uh, online that I can agree with and is if there is no free will because a person's will has been manipulated. However, free will still exists and it is exerted and applied and exercised willingly and freely by many of us because there are many of us here that the, the mistaken zygote that uh, know the truth of our being and I now accept it as an honor. Um, I was so upset for the longest time. I have had a lot of difficulties in my life. And yet I know that because of these difficulties and these challenges, it strengthens my alignment and my belief in the goodness of the mother, father, God. And in my sci-fi view, the mother is the embodiment of um, the planet is itself our goddess. And she somehow materialized here from the galactic core, which we get through through the sun, which is an actual portal and an allegorical story, but also in the truth of the master himself, Jesua, Jesus Christ, the Christ light, and also the sacred union of divine masculine and feminine of Mary Magdalene and Jesus Christ, which is the, the, the true holy grail, the chalice, whatever. Um, that little space between them, if, if you look at Leonardo da Vinci's uh, 
painting, you will see it's really amazing. Um, so look, look for the real true Holy Grail in the Last Supper. Um, and so this is what we have happening. And I was dead certain, which is a terrible way of putting it, I know, that I was being punished. And I kept asking the universe, is the karmic debt paid yet? Until I had had enough. And then I became an advocacy, self-advocate to the universe. Like, I have had enough. I need enough money so that I am not fearing for the ability to fix things when they break. I refuse to go into debt. And so I keep expenses low. I've received clothes from friends. And I have the ability to go out to nice dinners occasionally because that's how I treat myself. I eat uh, well by going to the local farmer's market and I take care of my health the best way I can. So it's not like I'm wasting money, but I had enough of this difficulty in the universe and I said beseechingly, help me. I don't know about any of you, but I was like, are some people, are there angels or are the angels really demons? Do we have spirit guides? Because when I was a little kid, I, I felt love. It wasn't from God. It was these beings. Because I got sent to the my closet so often for just being a loving girl, loving child. There's the story of when I went up to my mother and I said, um, I love you. And I remember to this day. And she looked at me sternly and uh, demanded I tell her what I had done wrong because nobody says I love you unless they're covering up something. And I was punished and sent to my room to think about it. And I wasn't allowed to come out until I could confess to my wrongdoing, which meant I was there all afternoon and she had to come get me. But when I was in the closet, there were two feeling there was two beings of love so I know they exist ah, I remember it now I've doubted them so often we all know how hard it is to live here so what's happening with women's sports and things like that this is all things of learning how to have advocacy when you have a man that but that is winning in swimming and another one winning in track. It's like, when are we going to call this out? It's, oh, it's abuse, but not in the same way as using, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a word that is overused because truly abuse or abusive nature, uh, abusiveness is either using the harsh and insulting language. I'm reading from a Bible, my dictionary Bible. Or treating roughly or cruelly. It's so what we're doing is we're having mental cruelty done to women. We're having what I would consider one of the greatest inequities of any any experience as a female athlete is to taking away a win in which it matters that you get third place and not fourth. So, all of this happening is happening. <laughs> so, so welcome to uh, the kickoff podcast from Low Tech Granny in the Kitchen. I have a lot of information for y'all. And I want you to know that I'm a boomlet. And the boomlet is the true special snowflake. I'm Jen Jones. More later, and thanks for listening in.